Hello, my name is Stephen Thomas, and this is the first video in a series of videos all about Azure Integration Services and hybrid options. I'm going to walk us through all the core components of Azure Integration Services and see how we can use them to build enterprise-grade solutions. This first video is titled Introduction to Azure Integration Services. I always like to start off all my courses thinking about this quote. I had to do an essay about this back in college, and it's something that's always stuck with me. And it's the only true wisdom it is in knowing that you know nothing. And this really relates well to Azure because services in Azure are constantly changing. If you look back when components first came out more than 10 years ago, you had a core set of features available. Now there's over 150 different services available for us to work with. Let's dive into a little bit more about BizTalk and the state of integration today. Integration, in my experience, still seems to be in demand. Customers are still wanting systems to talk e to each other, both on-premise and in the cloud, and then have these systems sync data back and forth from on-premise to the cloud as well. It seems, though, that full-time salaries are up, so full-time resources definitely are in demand. But my experience is freelance and independent contractor rates seem to be going down a little. I think as more and more people are working from home, that gives a much larger pool of talent to choose from, thus bringing down the rates. Clients are moving to more SaaS-based systems, a lot of cloud-based uh, systems, and this is providing new interfaces and new requirements for integration uh, at those companies. So that's, that's a plus as more and more things move to the cloud, because most clients still have legacy systems in their data centers. Uh, SaaS providers are causing a lot more hybrid interfaces, so they want to talk back to these systems they still have in their on-premise data centers. And one thing I've noticed is BizTalk is slowly being replaced. So we're at the current edition of BizTalk 2020, and they seem to be moving to other solutions. A lot of them are looking at Azure Integration Services. And that means it's a great opportunity for Azure Integration Services as we want to move away from our on-premise BizTalk server into more of a cloud-based uh, model. So what is Azure Integration Services? Well, according to the Microsoft website, it's there to build new integrated solutions that connect applications and services on-premise and in the cloud. And that makes sense. It's there to bring your business workflows together so they can be consistent and scalable. That sounds good to you. And last, they say it's to expose your APIs for developers, create opportunities for new business models. So these are the three core building blocks that Microsoft says make up Azure Integration Services. So really, what is this? Well, it's essentially a marketing bundle. Microsoft has put together a collection of services in Azure and said, we're gonna market these as Azure integration services. And I'll tell you, it really helps open up conversations about Azure integration services. Prior to the kind of introduction of this concept, you'd have to go in and talk to a client and say, we're gonna implement logic apps, we're gonna implement service bus and different components like that. And if they're an existing BizTalk server customer, it could be challenging for them to understand the a la carte model of the, the cloud offerings. So with BizTalk server, you knew what you were getting an orchestration engine, a rules engine, a workflow, et cetera. And now it's pick and choose, it's a la carte. So bundling them together and calling it Azure Integration Services has really helped clients understand kind of the core components that they need to use for their integration solutions. Now, that said, you don't buy Azure Integration Services itself. It's not its own SKU or billable entity. It still is a collection of independent a la carte services, but now just kind of marketed together as one, one unit. So what are the core services that Microsoft has bundled together into this Azure integration services? First is Logic Apps, which is going to be your workflow engine, plus all of its connectors to all its uh, third parties. Next is going to be Service Bus, which is going to be your enterprise queuing and messaging service in the cloud. The third one is API Management which can help serve as a gatekeeper into your Azure uh, enterprise, uh, front all your services, do a tremendous amount of routing of HTTP requests through API management. It's an extremely powerful service and we'll just barely touch it in these recordings. Event Grid for eventing and real-time reaction to activities in Azure. Uh, Azure Functions, which is microservice units of work to do repeatable tasks in the enterprise. So that's the fifth service. And the sixth service that's kind of bundled together is Azure Data Factory for more bulk data loads, ETL type transformation. Now, along with these six core features, there's a lot of other features and services that I think of as supporting features. 
You're by no means limited to just using those six that Microsoft bundles together. You can use anything in Azure to build integration solutions. But these are the ones, the core ones that you're going to see a lot of times when working with Azure. First is going to be integration accounts. And if you think back for a while, oh, six or eight years ago, there was a BizTalk uh, Services or something like that, Azure BizTalk Services, I think is what it was called, which was uh, B2B functionality that was being ported into the cloud. Um, a lot of that has kind of been converted into these integration accounts. So integration accounts in Azure today hold your schemas and your maps and then do B2B transformation, EDI type of work, AS2, stuff like that. Very powerful uh, features. We'll go into that in a whole nother uh, module. Blob storage is a great place to store large amounts of data. It's relatively cheap to store in blob storage. And uh, a lot of times we'll see it used with a claim check pattern where you have a larger message. Don't need to process that message through like the service bus and your logic apps. You just want to put that in blob storage and then can uh, pass around a reference to that message. So we see blob storage a lot. Hybrid connections, uh, also called relays. Relays is the older term. This is a way to securely expose on-prem services to the cloud. Some of the other things use hybrid connections under the covers. So it's a, it's a cool little feature out there. Key Vault, which is going to be your secure store for name value pair data. I will also store certificates. So when using integration accounts, you would put your certificates inside Key Vault. The on-premises data gateway, uh, this allows you to have your Azure-based resources connect to on-premise data securely via their gateway. The gateway is installed on a server in your enterprise, and then you connect it to Azure and can expose uh, services that way. We'll see a demo of the on-premises data gateway. It's pretty cool stuff once you see that, see that working. Uh, log analytics is also a common supported feature. This is used for logging and tracking things even across multiple Azure services. So they all support log analytics. And some of these features have been around for a very long time, like the on-premise data gateway um, has been around since July of 2016. And it's pretty much into, I think, a monthly or so update cadence. So they update that frequently. And it tends to be one of the services a lot of people haven't heard about or used much, but is very powerful and is definitely something we're going to take a look at from an integration perspective. So why should you care about Azure integration services? A lot of people are like, I'm getting rid of BizTalk, you know, why, why should I care about uh, any of this? Well, I asked ChatGPT to write me a class in C Sharp, and I wanted to use uh, remove special characters from a string, XML encode it, and then put it into Base64. And ChatGPT spits out a class, I simply hit copy, and I can go about and use this, this code. It's just given to me. But I asked ChatGPT if it could create me an Azure Logic app, and it says it doesn't have direct access to the Azure portal or the ability to create resources on my behalf. So this should be a great, great place for us as developers, knowing that uh, at least for a little bit, uh, not yet, it has access to do this for us. Uh, we will be able to, uh, to have a place to build these uh, low-code solutions with Azure integration. If you want to learn more, if you've liked what you've seen here, there's this is just the first video in, a, in the whole series, so look for subsequent videos. You can go to stephenwthomas.com slash learn, and I'll have links to all these videos in this series. And there's some, also some Pluralsight courses out there that I've created related to enterprise logic apps and messaging. The bottom two, getting started in fundamentals, are a little bit older, but the core concepts are still very relevant to what you'd be doing in Azure integration today. And thank you.